Fucking drugs? Uh, kick off the show here. <laughs> We're in green! Hey, cast, Bill's Mafia, how you doing today? It's been a crazy, crazy week, guys. How are you two doing? Oh, you know, hanging in there. You're right. It has been a wow. This this month of April, I, I don't know this this eclipse that's going on in a few <laughs> days. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on lately. Things are just the, the twilight zone. Uh, the Ides of March, we we somehow skated through, and and now we got this. Uh, I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> like you said, a lot of things, and uh, just excited to be here once again. Uh, keeping everyone going through the off season, doing what we can. Uh, and, yeah, lot, lots of things. And our off season will continue. Casey, mm-hmm. I know you've had a rough week. How's it going, <laughs> dude? It's been four days into this month, and the only thing that could top this off, when I told you guys before the show, is if my wife leaves me. Other than <laughs> like, once that happens, I could write a top top hit country song. But <laughs> you know, life could be better, but life could definitely be worse. So we just keep we just keep pushing along. Just keep going. Yeah. Well, let's first. Well, before we get into too much, um, let's let's hear from our our sponsors over at Game On Sports. Hey, it's John from Game On Sports Memorabilia. Check out our huge selection of unopened wax boxes of Pokemon cards. You have to see our selection of over 2 million sports cards in stock, plus hard-to-find card supplies. And if you have anything to sell, bring it in. We can help you determine the true value before you sell it. We pay fair market value every day. It's Game On Sports Memorabilia, 2670 Dewey Avenue in Greece. Check out our podcast for news and information on the card and collectible universe. Also, check out our Facebook page. For more, call 481-2153. That's 481 481- that's game on sports and memorabilia check them out a couple stores over there they got some awesome stuff uh we've had a pretty crazy day um i spent my my lunch time today uh trying to sift through all of the news the changes so as a lot of you may have seen from a lot of the twitter slash x posts today from the buffalo rumblings podcasters Vox Media has shut the doors on Buffalo Rumblings, and uh, they will no longer be, I guess, supporting the podcast for the podcasts, plural, for Buffalo Rumblings. Um, however, uh, well, we decided to kick open those doors because we're not done, and we will going forward be joining the Fan Sided Network. Uh, they are owned by Minute, Minute Media, and. Uh, it's pretty exciting news, actually, because it was just announced today, in fact, that I saw on LinkedIn that, make sure I get all this right, but fan the license for Fan Nation, which is part of Sports Illustrated, was awarded to Minute Media. So that combination of, I guess we'll call them sports media superpowers, <laughs> uh, is making for, or will make for quite a powerful platform and we are super excited to be heading there. Um, mm-hmm. Casey, Very Mike, exciting. I got anything to add? When one door closes, another one opens. You know, it's funny how a lot of all this has happened in the last four hours, just so everybody knows <laughs> that this is like everything came out at once. We all found out at once. And we're all dealing with it with our own ways. You know, some people happier than others um but i'm excited for this new journey you know I, i'm excited i'm thankful that fan sided is uh wanting to bring us on ronnie we can thank you for that uh entrance into there for since you've been writing for him for wh- however long but uh yeah i'm glad ronnie and i are uh 
<laughs> we're we're both hitting the comments. We're bringing them up and shutting them down. So sorry, guys, if you're uh, you're seeing that we're fighting over uh, comments here to chat about. <laughs> all right, I'll keep Mike, my you up. take it. No, Mike, you got the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. You talk about okay, it. Okay, that way we, right. yeah. Um, Roy, yes, we will be continuing on YouTube. We'll be anywhere you find us now, you will be able to find us in the future. You might just have to go directly to our platform, like directly to our pages on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. So obviously we won't be a part of Buffalo Rumblings. Still a lot more to learn about this whole fan-sided thing and what they have to offer and where we're going to be broadcasting from them. Uh, for them, I should say. Um, so there's more news and information to come, but yeah, well, you'll still be able right. to find us everywhere that you find us yeah. now. Hopefully, you just again search Mafia Cast. I know I don't know. You might be watching on the Buffalo Rumblings YouTube channel. So just to be clear, in the future, you can subscribe to. There's also a Mafia Cast, the Mafia Cast uh, YouTube channel as well, um, and the Facebook page. If you go there, you'll be sure to keep up to date um, on, on all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I just want to add really quick too, when when I posted that on X, formerly known as Twitter, <laughs> earlier today, uh, I was I guess somewhat surprised honestly the number of people who commented who uh, wished us well, and mm -hmm. uh, we have some fans out there, and I was, you know, I guess uh, in my feels about that, it was pretty cool to to see that. So for everybody who watches the show, if you're a fan of the show, if you're a regular of the show. This is your first time watching the show. Thank you so much. We appreciate the support. Um, and as always, of course, you know, super chats are open. But yeah, we we do have the YouTube page or channel. We've always had that. <laughs> There's not a ton of people following that right now. I think we're around 116. Um, but we do hope to kind of grow that. And of course, the Facebook page at the Mafia Cast. But that is that. The sponsorship with Game On will continue. So that's cool. Um, but like Always. Mike said, or Casey, more to come. For sure. Ooh, and yeah. so I don't do Facebook. Yeah, I, and that's the other thing too, by the way. If you are on X and you're watching this show via whether it's even my my face, uh, sorry, my Twitter page or Buffalo Rumblings. It's way cooler to watch it over on YouTube or the Facebook page because you can comment and we do see the comments here on the screen in front of us. We don't see the comments if you're commenting on Twitter unless we have it up in front of us, which can cause, you know, audio interference and all that. So we don't have it up generally. But yeah. So anyways, we got some other news that happened this week. So we'll go ahead and get into that. I don't know if anybody is aware, but Stefan Diggs has been moved on. Um, Casey, I'm going to let you start on how you feel about this and the direction of the uh, the team and where you think we might be headed. What's 2024 going to look like? Who might they replace Diggs with or, you know, anything else you got? I now have two players' jerseys hanging in my closet that we've shipped away this year. We have Tredavious White and Stefan Diggs, and both you can definitely – agree or for two totally different reasons yeah, Davis white cab casualty you know injury you know injuries might be pot, stock, like stockpiling up on him Diggs, i think he you know i think he asked for a trade i think he was over his time in buffalo the way i explained gabe davis's departure of buffalo was that like the team said the team and the player had done as much together as they possibly can. I don't think that they can achieve any more. And I was wrong about Diggs, but I think that's probably the way that both sides saw it at this point to where Diggs doesn't think he can do any better than what he did with Josh. And I don't think Bean thought he could do any better than he did with Josh. And apparently Josh thought the same thing because this move isn't made without Josh giving the okay to get rid of his you know, best target of the last four years. So I get it. You know, I, I'm sad. I loved Diggs. I, I, I was – he was, like, the number one, like, wide receiver that I was, like, hopeful we would trade for when we traded for him. Like, he, I, I was – like, he, I just saw the dog in him. He was so good, and he was young, and, he like, he was, you could tell he was ready to break out. Mm -hmm. And we got him at the perfect time. You know, we got him for his entire peak. 
And so if we got him for his entire peak, he was about to hit 30. Um, he, we've, I mean, we paid him. He was the sixth highest paid wide receiver in the NFL that while he was with us. So he got his money. It, it just became, we can't do any more with each other. It, it was the definition of a toxic relationship. I don't like you. You don't like me. Why are we doing this? Let's just split up. <laughs> and, you know, that, that to, to put it in layman's terms, that's just really what it ended up seeming like. Yeah. I'm sad yeah. to see him go, but I understand it. Right. And, like, you're, you're talking about jerseys. I got his helmet right here behind me. Um, but it's it's still it's still a valuable item to me. I will, I will always, you know, remember the years Diggs was in Buffalo um, and how he played here. You said, like, we got him through his, you know, his peak years. Really, you know, one of the one of the best right, wide receivers ever played for the Bills. Um, so, you know, you'll you'll always have that. Uh, but going forward, yeah, wish him the best. Hope he does good. Um, but as far as the Buffalo Bills go, I'm excited to see uh, maybe, the, you know, this team is going to be more Josh Allen's team now. Um, and you know, maybe he's going to be in more control, um, and you know, not, not have as much, you know, button heads maybe, or, or conflicts like that. And, and hopefully he, he takes a step this year, um, with that opportunity in, in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and Roy <laughs> makes a good, say for this, this point, sorry, Ronnie, um, uh, but no, this point that it. Roy makes, makes this trade 10 times better to swallow. The fact yeah. that we got one, they got digs on a trade on a draft pick that they didn't even own. No, that was an extra. They got it in a trade. So, it, you know, for them, it's easy come, easy go. They basically just got digs for free, but it's a year rental. And so, but the fact that we still got a second round pick, I understand it's next year. And I had the sticker shock. I mean, I was freaking out yesterday to you guys. I kept saying a second round pick. But when you go back and think about it, other than Tyreek Hill, all the wide receivers that have been traded in the last year, it's been for a fourth round pick, you know, a fifth and a sixth, two fifths, a fourth and a sixth. And that's Amari Cooper and all of those kinds of guys. So, I mean, Brandon Bean actually, you know, when you really take a step back and take your emotions out of it, he did pretty well getting, uh, getting, I guess he did well getting rid of Stefan Diggs. I understand the money aspect, but, you know, that's one of those things we've seen teams. Russell Wilson get cut get cut twice. Teams are willing to eat them. Teams are willing to eat the money for them for him to not play for them. Like it's it's not an unusual thing in the NFL anymore. Yeah, it, it's not. And and you brought up the point of the, the trade value. <clears throat> I think because I'm going to put this in fantasy football terms. This is why when you play fantasy football, you draft running backs typically first because there's a ton of talent. A wide receiver. I don't think that, I, yeah, there's the high end receivers. They get paid a lot now, or a lot more than they used to. But when it comes to trade, they just don't carry that same value anymore, it seems. Uh, they, you know, <clears throat> so. Outside of Tyreek Hill. <clears throat> outside of Tyreek Hill. Um, and I'm going to say, Casey, you actually stole a little bit of my thunder because you actually said that you were wrong, which. I wanted to tell you you were wrong before you said it, so. <laughs> I will never give you that satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going to add in, though, when this all came down, and I was sitting talking with one of my daughters last night, too, you go back to the Bengals playoff game when he basically walked out on the team from the locker room, and one of the teammates, and I can't remember who it was, actually had to bring him back in. And then we had the whole off season, summer long of all the random tweets and and then coming to mini camp and, and showing up there and causing some problems, whatever that whole thing was. And then he left, didn't practice at all with the team. Uh, and now this, <clears throat> to me, point blank, he quit on the Bills. That's how I see it. And I think that started last year. Not to misunderstand me, I think when it came to game time on the field, he was as all in as he could be. He quit on the organization, not, not there, the team. Though? You're not 100% there. What's up? I said he quit on the organization, not the team. I think that's what you mean. I just want to know yeah, what he I was looking at when the ball it, yeah. went through his hands. Because the ball was through his hands and he was looking the other way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just very, very disappointing to see it go out like that, you know? Yeah. Right at, right at uh, the end. 
And but I, would you I rather have, no have a problem. guy like that or like the way Tyree Kill and Patrick Mahomes did to where he they're at the top of their game, you know, absolute yeah, right. peak? Yeah. Hey, they still I, that got old it thing is as Jeez. far as Tyree Kill goes, I I I didn't know I don't understand it now. I didn't understand it then, other than that's Hill simply chasing the money. Yeah. And I I get sometimes players wanting to um you know get traded away from teams my computer is dying so bear with me but uh and just to me with the with with buffalo it's a little different though because they are a super bowl contender say what you want about mcdermott the rest of the roster whatever to me they are still a super bowl contender and just like with hill i think for different reasons though i don't think Diggs is chasing money i think he's chasing rings uh, and for whatever reason, doesn't think he can get it here. But it's, you know, it's like if a Devontae Adams with the Raiders, who appeared to be in a complete rebuild, if he wanted to go out and get traded, I get that. But for Diggs to do it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't know if there was a rift between him and, and, and Allen, that, and we'll probably never know. Maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe in. I mean, we kind of saw it years on the now, field, though, but. They tried yeah. to keep it hush hush, I guess. Maybe forty years down the field, Alan will write a biography, and then we'll know the truth. But until then, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna jump over here and plug my laptop in. So you guys take it away. <laughs> <laughs> take it away, Casey. <clears throat> Roy brings I mean, up the point. Well, yeah, Hill had the ring, so yeah, time time to chase the money, like you said. Yeah, but I also Houston got better. This year, I mean, uh, immensely better on offense. But their defense is still where they're struggling a little bit. Now, I know they got Daniil Hunter. Um, they have Derek Stingley in the backfield. Jalen Petrie's a hell of a safety. They ha- And they also have Will Anderson, you know, who's a pretty damn good uh, defensive end. But that's only a couple of pieces. I mean, you see, I mean, look at what the Dolphins had last year. They had pieces as well. They had Javon Holland and uh, Jalen Ramsey and Christian Wilkins. But outside of them, you know, they, they just had just guys in. So, it, like, Houston, like, if they still have a ways to go to become, like, a Super Bowl contender, in my opinion, do I think they should win the South? Absolutely. I definitely think that they should win. I mean, but I don't think that – I mean, they're. I feel like now they're as good at – as Buffalo, because we're we have the better defense, they at this moment in time might have the better offense. Probably do have the better offense, just due to wide receiver weapons as a whole. Um, but I think right now, like that, just I mean that knocked us down, brought them up, but now it's kind of a neck and neck thing. Do you think Diggs puts them over the top, though? I think. Diggs is a great compliment to what they already had in Nico Collins and Tank Dell. I think he is like a perfect compliment to that. To I mean, those other two guys can just run rampant on the outside and stretch the field and run the long, deep crossers. And they can use Diggs as route running. And maybe he's turning, this is his Cole Beasley era. And he and that's what he wanted to do and Joe Brady maybe that's not what he wanted Diggs to do maybe that's one reason why they left but maybe it's it's time for him to go in the slot and be that safety blanket for uh Stroud and he's going to be the guy that gets you know the eight the eight catches for 80 yards and one touchdown but he's but he's not stretching the field he's letting the other two young guns do it yeah I think he's I think he's a really good compliment for, for that team I, I think obviously Dex is talented. Um, I do question if he's the same receiver he was a few years back, two or three seasons ago. But looking at the deal and looking at the Texans roster, I, it, to me it does doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot for them because Nico Collins is really good. He is a number one receiver. John Mechie the third after you know battling the cancer and coming back fully healthy last year and starting to kind of come on tank dell um robert woods is still there too in fact his name has come up a couple of times and some people thinking about uh potential vet receivers that bills could go get i'm not a big fan of robert woods i don't think he's anywhere near what he used to be 
So I don't think that would be a good good trade. But um, just if you look at this because of the void years, and here's what they're doing. Um, I'm just going to read this. So They cut the last three and prorated it to this right. year. And his one-year deal is fully guaranteed, $43.1 million that the Texans Ooh. are paying him for one year. To me, that still does, makes sense. And doesn't at all. Like, yes, Diggs is a good player. I don't think he's a top five guy anymore. So you're, but you're paying him like the best receiver in football. Forty. They have that much dollars? money to burn this upcoming year. Or? Well, they they've got Stroud on a rookie they're, deal. They've got Tim right. Dillon on a rookie deal. So they got Nico um, Collins on a rookie do, deal. Take advantage while you can, right? Collins is a rookie deal. The running back, oh, I can't remember the name. Joe Mixon, they they extended him. So if you could, so if you could pay a running back, you could pay a wide receiver that amount, that amount of money. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, yeah, like I said, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And um, yeah, that's just a lot of money for for one year. But I I thought um, Schefter put up a tweet earlier when he was talking about this uh, three year void. Uh, and the, his wording, I thought, was interesting. He said something to the effect of, this situation puts Diggs in a position where he has to prove it on and off the field. The fact that he said off the field, that said to me that I think there's a lot of teams out there that are leery of him because of the off the field. This is the second team now that he has basically forced his way out of in very similar fashion. Um, I think that's going to be a problem in the future. I don't think anybody's going to give him the money that he just got from Buffalo or even this year now with the Texans. Well, I think that's a D'Amico Ryan's thing. D'Amico Ryan's doesn't take nobody's shit. You know, I like he he's the kind of guy, not that this wouldn't actually happen, obviously, but he's the kind of guy that if he could make it work, if Diggs started being a little uh, you know, can't say the never mind, I can't say the word I wanted to. Diva. And yes, Diva. Thanks, Mike. There you go. And you could, I could, you know, you could see D'Amico Ryan's being like, "All right, see you, thanks, bye." I mean, not except it would cost them forty-three million dollars, and Diggs would be making almost a hundred million dollars to not play for two teams this year. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, from business savvy, Diggs is getting it. <laughs> yeah, bro, he's he's like the Kirk Cousins of wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good 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 analogy right there. Yeah, uh, it's wild. Um, somebody posted in here. If this is the last Mafia Cast show, I'd love to have you guys on my pod sometime. Hey, we're going to say it again just in case you missed it because we have over 1,100 people currently in the live show. We we will no longer be doing the podcast with Buffalo Rumblings, but we are continuing. We got picked up today by Fan Sighted um, Media Group. So we're going to be moving over to that side. How quickly all of that transpires, I do not know. We might have a show next week. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not sure how quickly this will all move, but we will continue one way or the other. So, you, again, you can find us on YouTube at The Mafia Cast. You can find us on Facebook at The Mafia Cast, and we will have shows there. Okay. Um, anything else we need to add as far as days go? Because we do have a mock draft we want to get into. We promised a mock draft today. This is our first one as a team. So, I'm really excited about that. But I do want to give anybody, people listening, you want to comment? Anybody last chance to, to, to voice their thoughts or opinions on Diggs? Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm done talking about him. <laughs> I just wanted yeah. to say thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think hey. that, I think that answers that question. So Thanks to Diggs or thanks uh, to Ronnie to not talk about it anymore? <laughs> no, I just want like to Diggs yeah. Yeah. and to Ronnie. But, like, I, like Diggs, gave, like, Diggs gave me the best four years – of like my bills fandom like like the last four years have been the most fun i've ever had as a bills fan yeah and great to watch is, and he is big in thanks to that yeah i mean it, he didn't make josh allen like josh allen didn't make digs they were each coming into their own and met at the perfect time so like he does he belong on the wall i don't know it, it was only four seasons but it was Agreed. the best. It was the best four season stretch in a Bills uniform that might ever be. You know, I mean, yeah. the numbers he put up were amazing. So I'm 
I just like I'm just I was thankful yeah. for the time that we did have. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna miss some of his play on the field, um, most of his play on the field. But you know, all the power to him. Good luck and time to move on. Yeah. And, and, and one one more thing, one memory that Casey and I will hold dear to our heart is uh, when we yeah. witnessed Diggs uh, do a little curb job trying to beat uh, stadium traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right. But so he had the window down. It was definitely him. I told him good game, and, and that was that. <laughs> I was outstanding Let's give him try, trying story. to get us into traffic, and he was uh, he was making his own lane. So that, that just yeah. tells you. <laughs> we were yeah. turning off Allen Street leaving the it was the Bengals game the Bengals playoff game yeah and you know we're sitting in traffic sitting in traffic this guy comes and knocks on my window and Mike like he said is out trying to help direct traffic because it's such a shit show and this guy knocks my window he goes hey you gotta look he goes you gotta move over as much as you can he's like Steph's coming through I was like who the hell is Steph he's like Diggs I was like no shit really yeah and, <laughs> and he I, just rolled on through. And the next thing you know, I look to my like I'm just looking forward. Mike's still out, out and about. And I look to my left, and there's this car right next to me. And hit like Mike said, his window was down, and I could just see hit the outline of his face. I was like, oh my god, that is Diggs. And he peels off, and he runs over this curb in this <laughs> six figure car. And I'm just like, God, he was damn, out there. dude. Like yeah, he was out, out, like with a quickness. Yeah. And Mike and I got to witness it firsthand. So that that was that, he, you're right. That's one thing that we were pretty cool to see him off the field. <laughs> it was. It, it was. I, okay. If we're gonna share these little kumbaya moments with Diggs, I'll I'll have to share mine. Uh, yeah, you, can actually you got go. the best one. You got the yeah, best I, one. And the twelve hundred and forty people that are currently watching live, that's awesome. It's a new record. You can actually go to our YouTube page um, at the Mafia Cast, and there is a video on there of me catching a pass from Stefan Diggs um, at the Jets game in 2022. It was the home finale, and it was the first time that Buffalo had locked up the division at home in like since '90, whatever it was. And uh, he's going through and he's throwing the ball up into the, into the crowd. It's obviously pregame, and uh, my wife is doing the video, and so she got the whole thing and. It was a super cool moment, and I will forever remember Diggs because of it. I, I hate, <clears throat> excuse me, I hate, <clears throat> I hate how it all ended, but that's a memory that yeah, it, I will cherish cherish forever. So yeah, go and check out the, the our YouTube page at the Mafia Cast and check out that video. It's it's pretty neat. Uh, mm-hmm. I look like a twelve year old with the big old grin on my face catching that ball, and I did throw a perfect spiral back. I'm just gonna say that. He I think I might have pulled something in the process, but we'll, we'll let you guys be the judge of that. <laughs> Feel free to drop your comments on that on that spiral. <laughs> you beat me to it, damn it! <laughs> I absolutely did catch it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so let's get into this draft. Uh, I, we because of everything that's going on today. Um, then I got off work. I didn't have a lot of time when I, once I got done with that to to you know organize this draft much better than what it is. But what we're going to do is uh, I Sterling, will thank you. put it up here and see share screen, um, not the Instagram one, and share. All right, we got it up there. Yes, we do. All right, we're going to do all seven rounds, and we have uh, roughly half an hour to do it. So let's get into it. Uh, Gives us a little more than 10 minutes around to decide. Yeah. And, and if there's any. I- if there's no decision to be made, you guys commenting are going to be the ultimate decision makers here. Yeah. So yeah. If the three of us can't come to a consensus. You guys get to make the call. That is correct. And for the sake of getting through this in a somewhat timely manner, this will not include any trades, but I do want to do a mock. Oh, come on. What I do want to do a mock that? when we have the whole show. All right. And including trades. And we're going to just we'll go nuts with it. Uh, See, Sterling maybe, even maybe. wants a trade. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Okay. Fine. What are we going to do this with this first pick? Let me go ahead and start this. Oh, shit. <laughs> I guess we're going to pick. Quick. Hold on. Uh, whatever. We'll move. We got, wait, we got some trade offers. Let's see what they are. Yeah. that The offers are what I, I want to hear. Um, 
I don't know if you can see it very well. So I, I just made can. this my whole screen. So what is, so what is the trade? It's, it's 44 and what? It's very hard to tell on here. It's 44. Yeah, it's... Madonna and Mitchell is already gone. I don't want to trade back. Well, What's the other trade? It doesn't really show them, so it just kind of shows the teams that are... What well, doesn't even show wanting that? Trade. Yeah, yeah. That's too complicated. Yeah, it doesn't really show what they're wanting okay. or anything. Right. So we just kind of have to put it in if we wanted to. I know it looks like the this one. We must be getting so another pick. So it's the Raiders and the pick. Steelers offering picks 44 or 51. Nope, too far down. I don't want to trade. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and it doesn't really – what. like what do yeah, we I'm get gonna... out of the deal? Right. <laughs> no, I'll just give them all right. away. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just get to the trade. Let's just yeah. get to a player. <laughs> all right. All right, so – we're at pick twenty eight. Um, everybody knows safety uh, is too well, early. Yeah, so we got a corner here, Kool Aid McKinstry. I think there's one. Option. Even though I think that, I mean, he's a good player value wise. That's an awesome pick. Are we just we have more pressing needs, I think. So this would honestly be a good spot to trade back in because for me. Uh, this guy here, I've mentioned this name multiple times, Lad McConkey. He is one of my mm -hmm. draft um, crushes, if you will. I want this guy on the Bills team. I say just and take I, him. Just take him. What? Well, wait. Just take let's him. let's let's scroll on it and just. I just want to see. I like to scroll the list a little further and just see who's there because I don't know some of these mock drafts. They they show some uh, decent players uh, falling, so I'm just curious to see who's who's further down the list. Well, it, and it, you take this with a grain of salt. This is PFF Pro Football Focus's rankings right. here, as far as their big board. Mm -hmm. um, so you may have a different opinion of where these guys should be, and like Pro Football Network's going to have a different uh, big board. Uh, my Kuiper's going to have a different. I mean, it's all yeah. over the place. Yeah, I mean, and, I'm on board. I'm on board with the McConkey pick. I uh, just, I'm just curious to see what we're passing up here if, if we could uh, compare it. To. Well, if yeah, you look at those in front of them. Yeah, there's nobody else in front of him at a bigger need, right? Outside yeah. of Tyler Newbening, you don't take a safety outside of a generational safety in round one. Which okay. I don't think there is that in this draft. There's some some good ones, but I don't think I, any generational here, type. Roy Roy says filter wide receiver. We can see all the wide receivers. Right, I don't yeah, think we... there's another wide receiver that, in my opinion, that you can take over Lad McConkey. That's okay. Lad. And I agree. I, you, you think you can make an argument for Troy Franklin, but Franklin's mm. performance at the NFL Combine worries me a little bit. It wasn't as good as I think people expected. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I believe his 10-yard splits was over 1.6 seconds compared to McConkey. It was like 1.51 or some crazy number. Uh, he's uh, McConkey was a 4.39 speed. I believe Franklin came in at 4.41, which if we're talking tenths of a second, isn't a whole heck of a lot. But when you're talking about the NFL level – and corners who have that kind of speed, every tenth of a second counts. Um, I mean, just ask Diz and his drop pass. Like, oh, every inch you need every inch, right? So, uh, are we all in agreement? Are we going with McConkey? Take McConkey. I like it. All right, Keon Coleman. We're no, taking McConkey. we got to go receiver. We've established. Yeah, I, don't like, uh, I don't like Coleman. No, I know. <laughs> And look who was just taking one pick ahead of us by the yeah. Texans, Keon Coleman. There it is. By the Texans. Right. <laughs> taking our players. Right. Taking our players. I, I would have been fine with Coleman at 60. but And honestly, I mean, let's let's be honest here. I, I don't see the Texans taking a receiver at six, or 59, given what just transpired, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so now the question is. I do, I do like Hicks. Um but but I, I have been saying uh, wait on the safety. Um, I, I was hoping edge or D tackle here in the second. That's what I was looking for. Since we what got are a you receiver, thinking, Casey, it, it sounds like you've got some thoughts. Uh, I want Jalen wants... Hulks bad. <laughs> well, we're past that, I, I think. Well, Jalen Polk, I have no problem doubling up on. Receivers. In fact, I put out a tweet today um, asking what Bills Mafia would think about a receiver room that includes um, both. Like it in Donkey. 
Leggett and McConkey, and that that post has just completely exploded on Twitter. Uh, if you want to go check it out and, and put in your thoughts or your ideas on that. So uh, clearly I don't have an issue doubling up at the position, and personally I kind of think I would. Now, Chris, Who else is here. out there, though? Who else is out well, there? Marshawn Nealon is – That just yeah. Right. Yeah, Marshawn Nealon, uh, edge out of Western Michigan. Uh, I don't really know a hell of a heck of a lot about him. If we're talking just straight up value, I mean, rank 58, we're picking a 60, and it's fair. But Jalen Polk, this is the only other one I think I would consider at this point, or maybe Jaden Hicks. But Chris Jenkins, the defensive interior out of Michigan, because it is definitely a need, in my opinion, despite the recent signings at the position. But we, I think we need some young future starters there. So what do you guys think? Keep scrolling. Junior Colson, Kyrie Jackson, Braylon oh. Trice, and Edge. Oh, Trice is Spencer Rattle. Really That's the guy. That's yeah. who we need. Pick number six yeah. quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I really like Braylon Trice. Yeah. Braylon Trice and Braden Fisk are two guys who yeah. I, I've fallen in love with this draft. Hmm. So, I, so my vote is either for Braylon Trice or Jalen Polk. Mike, what what are you thinking? I like Jenkins, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so does Roy. Um, Christopher Haynes is tempting, but I'm, I'm not to you gone. I'm not oh, loaded. man. Just, just go Jenkins. I don't think it's... I don't think tackle is the biggest need right now. If we were to go like defensive line, I would rather go edge. Yeah, I I do like Braylon Trice. I I could agree with you there. Um, I just I think that the depth of edge is more necessary. Yeah, because we don't we don't have Shaq Lawson anymore. We have we have AJ Groot and Vaughn. And, and we don't Jonathan. know what we're gonna get That's with Vaughn. Yeah. But okay, this so. year we were almost, you know, we we were getting worried about D tackle too this year, with with yeah, the certainty we, of Daquan coming we, back. But we still but for the future we still too. already have four. Yeah, like four. We like do. We have two and, five tar- starters and two guys that are the rotational pieces that we basically had last year. They just have a different nameplate. Yeah. Yeah, and they're younger. Both of them that they signed are they're in their twenties, still. I believe late twenties. So that's. That's a positive. Daquan Jones' age, I think 33, uh, 34, that worries me a little bit. And then last two years he hasn't – he's missed some, you know, some time because of injuries. But I do agree we don't know what we're getting with Von Miller. Um, we really don't know what we're getting with A.J. Epinesa. We hope that he takes another step. But two years of six and a half sacks, I think we need more from him than that uh, this year. So backup plan, not a bad idea. So I'm I'm on board with Braylon Trice. If if that's the direction we want to go over Marshawn Nealon, which like I said, I don't really know much about Nealon. I'll have to I'll have to look into that one a little bit more. Same. Uh, he's out of... it, but from what I've learned and from what I've seen and watched of Trice, I just I he's just a hell of an athlete and he is fast coming off that edge, man. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Trice is it? Let's do it. I'm on board. All right. Woohoo! I won one. (laughs) No, you didn't. And I was about to give up and say, just take Jenkins. It was really hard to pass up hope, though. Oh, my gosh. Look at this thing just scroll and scroll and scroll. I know. Um, Not around. All right. We're at. Don't need him. We're at round four, pick number 128. I'll add in before we get into the. The players, I do think Buffalo will make somehow get a pick between 16 and 128. I don't see them waiting that long. Yeah. So I think they're going to move up probably into the third, maybe even back into the second, have a couple of second-round picks. But we don't get to play that game on this particular mock because I messed it up. Not today. But anyway. Maybe next time. We'll, we'll real, do a few real, of these, right? Real yeah. quick. We have over 1,500 live viewers. So I know. This is we awesome. I just want to say – Thank you to everybody watching. Go visit our Facebook, our YouTube, at Poppycast. Everywhere, see us. All our Twitter names are up there. This is awesome. Thank you very much for all the support. Yeah, and check out Game On Sports. You're in Rochester, Buffalo. They got stores uh, both cities, so 
hey, if you're even in Syracuse or anywhere else, it, it's worth the drive. Definitely worth the drive. Uh, I got a couple friends I just turned out of the store recently, and they've been loving it. So, like I said, go in, check it out. It's worth it. You got nothing to do. Uh, it's real, real cool stuff John's got there at, at Game On Video Games and Sports Memorabilia uh, in Hamburg and Greece. So, again, thank you guys, yeah. all of you. Yeah. All right, Brian, get back to scrolling. Part. Yeah. All right. All what right, are we doing? Right. Here we go. We're on the clock. <laughs> We're on the <laughs> clock. Um, so this name I've heard a lot, uh, Audric Estime, if you want to add to the to the running back room. Uh, I don't think we need that at this spot. I think there's no, much bigger no. needs. Um, I do like Cooper Beebe in this spot. However, we just signed Lael Collins today. Forgot to mention mm-hmm. that at the start of the show. And he's played both tackle tackle. and guard, so it'll be interesting to see. I think he might be kind of uh, that that swing everywhere guy for for Brandon Bean and and McDermott. But and we have could also maybe beat out somebody for a starting job. We have Mm -hmm. we and we already have Ryan Vandermark, Mm -hmm. and we have Jack Doyle still, who's coming off the ACL injury last year or the Achilles injury, and Alec Anderson. And Alec Anderson. So, I, to be honest, I think the depth, our offensive line depth, is pretty solid. I wouldn't expect any real draft count, like draft um, compensation going super early. I wish Stay we didn't healthy. take. I wish we didn't take Braylon Trice now because Muhammad Kamara is like my now like draft love. Yeah. So, like, we would have gone safety. Maybe we would have got Hicks, and then. Kamara, do you think that would have been good? Could have felt that way, yeah. Or is it the butterfly effect? You know, we pick him there, and then this guy isn't available yeah. here. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you never know. I think looking at Glad this we got list earlier. Um, I don't think we need a running back. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to a corner given the current situation there. But I'm not opposed to going edge again either. Keep scrolling yeah. a little bit, would you? Would you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't need a tight end. I got another running back, uh, McKinley Jackson. I've heard some there good things go. about him. Now, yeah. what about what about wide receivers? Who's there at wide receiver right now? Ah, let's uh, filter this. Cornelius Johnson from Michigan. Marcus Rose. I mean, Jack Saint, Georgia. Another Georgia no, kid. No, yeah. Taj no, Washington. I've heard some okay. good things about him. Isaiah Williams. Here's Luke one McTaffrey. night. I, I really want Luke on our team. Come this on. This is way too, way too early to grab him, but I really do want him. <laughs> you can't argue the bloodlines, right? And his daddy was a pretty good receiver for the Broncos. His brother, he's an all right running back over there in San Francisco. Yeah. So He might, he, he might be the best running back we've ever seen, but I don't know. <laughs> and maybe, you know. But, yeah, too early third round, for, or sorry, fourth round. I think he's somebody we might be able to snag in the fifth. Which is why I'm kind of don't want to go receiver here because I don't want to get three receivers right. in this draft. Yeah, there, I'd rather wait and see if here. yeah, see if maybe some of these guys fall right. a little bit further. But, I think uh, my opinion is Kamara. That's kind of where I'm leaning too. Oh come on! You're gonna make me make a case here. I mean, you I already went edge. Some other ideas. Go for you it. You already went edge. Go with McKinley. McKinley. Jackson. Oh, He's the DI. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad idea either. All right, state your claim, Mike. Ah, let's you're outnumbered. I was outnumbered and I staked the claim. Uh, Ronnie's on the fence. Ronnie's got to make the, the, <laughs> the job. No, I, no. I'm going to stick with edge. I'm going to stay. All I right. would rather double up on edge at this point because, cause, yeah, we don't, we really don't know what we're going to have on the on the edge in 2024. Yeah. We, we, we have some bodies. Right, but Rousseau hasn't really shown that he's going to become a, a, a legit pass rusher. He could be another five to six sack guy a season. We really need more than that, uh, especially if Vaughn uh, is no longer Vaughn. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm I'm fine doubling up on edge in this one. Scroll a little bit more, just a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> I gotta see if if there's anything that would pop out. Any names? Uh that pop out to me. I'm not really seeing too much. Um, there was a running back there, but not, not, not well, now, right now. We're about to have 
pick 133. I know Ryan, but Ron, I think yeah. we can get Boyd at 133. Yeah. I, I think we too. can get him at the next pick. Okay. So I think that means you, you made my argument for me. Or or my <laughs> you you anti my argument I didn't even make yet. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're doubling up on Kamar or at edge. Yeah. Is that yep. the deal? Yeah, let's do it. You got to hit All on right. one of them. Yeah. All right. So we still got Estime. Yeah, another corner here. Uh, I've heard a little bit about him. Uh, Show Wade Smith. Yeah. Braylon uh, Allen. We don't need tight end. Top on Max. And see, Jackson Roy is Collins still there. Roy Collins wants Braylon Allen. Uh, there's a lot of people that want him, actually. I mean, he's a hell of a running back. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, here's D-Love uh, stopping by, showing some love from the Texans. He just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Good luck What's this up, year. What's up, brother? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with your new weapon. And that's not to, that's not a dig at Diggs. <laughs> I, no. I, he might be great for you guys. I don't know. But um, I think he's going to play hard for the Texans. I think, you know, he's going to have his numbers. and Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> we're thinking, I like Braylon Allen. I like any running back that comes out of Wisconsin. They're almost always really good. I just don't think in the fourth round we want to go that direction still. Not with Ty Johnson and Dal uh, Dalvin <laughs> and James Cook on the roster currently. So we're talking about the number three guy. And I don't want to draft our number three running back in the fourth round. Agreed. No. I mean, Jackson's hey, staring at us right there. All right, Rodney. Uh, Boyd, is, Boyd. Boyd is still there, too. And our next pick after this is 144. But he still could be there. Could be. He could. And if he's if he is, are we comfortable doubling up on defensive interior? I think that's too much. Exactly. I agree. Somebody doesn't make the roster, which could very well be one of the two new signees. Uh, I think Austin Johnson is safe, but the other guy, which I can't remember his name, something Williams. Uh, if we drafted two defensive interiors within the first four rounds, yeah, somebody's the odd man out, or they're just probably actually on the practice squad, which most likely would probably be a rookie. But, but we picked two, it this way. We picked it like this. a receiver and two edge, though. Right. But think about it like this. If we did draft two defensive interiors, We've got two edge guys. There's your four man front right there in the next couple of seasons. Once Could very well be. Daquan Jones moves on. Once Von Miller moves on, um, you know, it could very well be your front four. And all rookie, well, yeah, rookie contracts. I kind of like that. So now I'm like talking so myself my, into back to back. To my issue is, is we need as many people that are going to act like they're going to make an impact this year. That's where this draft is different from a lot of others for the bills is that we have more hills, more holes to fill than usual. And I think we're going to need more, more rookies to make an impact than we're used to. And these fourth round players are going to be people that I think Bean is going to be looking to lean on a little bit more. And I don't, I don't think that this is going to be the draft where he's looking too like into the future too, too far in order to replace the guys that are currently on the roster. I think he just there he goes. He's frozen. Now he's not. Now he is. No, you are. Um, no, I am. <laughs> I, 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 I understand what Casey is saying. I also feel like this needs to be a draft. Yes, yeah, so let's try to get some impact guys. In 2024, but I think the team needs to look long term, and I think they are. Um, I wrote about this actually like a month ago that I think the Bills were at a point now where they need to think beyond 2024. A week after I wrote that, they cut Trey White, they cut Jordan Poyer, uh, they released all these guys. Uh, they they Trey, you know, it's been crazy. I think I'm not saying throw away 2024. I legitimately do think this team will compete still for a division title. For the playoffs, for the Super Bowl, as long as you got Josh Allen, mm -hmm. we're gonna be fine. But long term, outside of twenty twenty four, we've got to look there. Um, Casey, are you back? Or are you still frozen? I have been I see here him. the whole time. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are we thinking? Are are we gonna definitely go McKinley Jackson here, and then just see what happens after this? I mean, we haven't taken the interior yet. We haven't. 
So Roy wants to know what wide receivers are available. So let's go ahead and take a look at that really quick again, see what we've got. So this uh, is round four. still the same group. Yeah. Yeah. Pick 33 so of round Washington. four. Um, still to a kind of. Joshua Cephas. David White. Most of these guys I don't know a hell heck of a lot about. I've heard a little bit about the Zachary or Zachary Franklin. Um, and that's the bottom of the list right there. Yeah. So. All right. Double dip. Double What's dip. this double dip, though? Defensive line. I thought you meant in interior we already got two oh i see you get both of them ah ronnie you're muted if christian boyd is there he is a he's another one of my draft crushes so fo so far mcconkey and boyd those are the two guys that wait, i really really whoa, want to the roster but check out check out safety who's there at safety uh i think we're kind of out of the safety group at this point to be honest but let's see I don't we know. Might have missed, Tyke, uh, Bo Braid is still there. Malik Mustafa. Is Tyke yeah. Smith still there? No, he's no. Damn. Not uh I know there's a couple of safeties I was looking at too. They're all gone. I I like um Bo Braid. Braid? I like I do Bo too. Braid. Do it. And I think he Heck, he let's just do it. it. All right. All right, let's let's grab Jackson. And then see what happens. And Christian Boyd's gone. Oh, yeah. Mason Smith him. was out there. Damn it. We could have had Mason Smith. Keep scrolling. <laughs> they gotta oh. scroll. <laughs> I scrolled like 20, 30 spots down. <laughs> he must be falling down uh PFS board, but oh man, yeah, we missed out on both of these guys barely. Uh, both of them are taking one and two spots in front of us. I would have rather um, had either of those. So basically you take our defensive interior pick that we just made and you could rotate either of them guys into that you know, into our into that spot for our, our draft. Say that again. I'm saying I mean, that they were available. Well, yeah. That that well that I'm saying that could have been our pick last, our last pick. Yes. Could have been one yes. of them guys. Yeah. Well, and and I think if it we makes did you fine feel with better. McKinley Jackson. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. I don't think McKinley Jackson right. is like a worse player than either Mason Smith or Christian Boyd. Yeah. Um, but maybe we should have went Bo Braid. Let's see yeah. if he's still there. Oh, well, I think we can agree too. He's, There's depth Braid this late there, in the yeah. draft at uh, D lineman. Take Braid. Yeah, I, I'm on board with Braid right now. I, I maybe it's a little early. Our next pick is at 140. No, nah, 160. That, at this point in That's the draft, risky. you take your guys. Yeah. Take them. All right. Bo Brady does. Wait. Wait. <laughs> All right. Now, now check wide receivers again. Uh, Zach Zinter. First of all. Taj Washington. Let me, hold on. Pick 154, the Rams. Sorry, Roy. They got Will Shipley. Uh, I do like he was a name that I've been watching too. Well, I do like Shipley. I think uh, from Clemson, I believe he is yes. a guy that they use all over the field. He, and there is a receiver. Uh, he's a lot like James Cook, essentially. Like you can put him all over the formation. Uh, I do like him too. But um, yeah, we missed on him. <laughs> Roy's not happy with this. Uh, sorry, next, Roy. Time, Roy. I, next time. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's. Let's see. Taj. Uh, 158, Dalen Holker, tight end, Zach Zinter, Isaiah Williams, Joe Milton the third. Uh, we'll talk about him in a He's minute. gonna be he's our pick 163, let me tell you. Oh yeah? I that's where I was going with that. All right. Uh Taj Washington. Get two receivers in this draft. We all in agreement. Nope. No. I guess Mike you better. I mean, we just talked uh, linemen, not not as uh, important, but I know a couple of us have taken Zach Zinter around this spot. 
Uh, at least really, a I couple usually, of address. I usually have. I usually do take a guard or a center around this spot. Yeah. But Same. like it, after you know the three of us, this is why we do the podcast. The three yeah. of us talked out, you know, who we actually have as depth pieces on the offensive line, and additionally getting Lyle Collins. I'm not too worried about yeah. offensive line depth right now. And I'm all I for mocking up some skill positions right now too. We we need an we need we literally need another wide receiver. Yeah. We need another yeah. body. Yeah. Sold. I I agree. I'll just add in. I think for me, Leo Collins signing today changed all of that. To me, um, I think he adds a ton of depth. Like I said, he's good enough that he could potentially even beat out one of our existing guards, particularly. Yeah, um, yeah, that's when I was David Edwards. That was where I was going to go with that. I could see that happening. So, I think that's a huge, huge signing today, uh, as far as the offensive line goes. So, yeah, uh, where do you go? Taj Washington. Are we going there? Yes. Let's get it. Yes. And done. All right. I'm going to have to put this out on Twitter and get people's thoughts too once yeah. we get it done. Uh, mm. All right. We are at pick uh, 163, and get Milton him. is still Take there. Take him. Take Joe Milton. <laughs> I'm with it. Mike, you got anything to add? No. With Casey's energy, I, I want to see this work. <laughs> I okay. I have loved Joe Milton since Tennessee was got all the way up to number two in the country a couple years ago. All right, ago. you're getting too deep now. He, not, dude, he has had – like he had, he's like Josh Allen in the fact that he has every physical trait that you could ever dream of for a quarterback. So if you put mm -hmm. somebody with all that ability – natural ability behind Josh Allen, who went through the Paul's same going. growing pains as he's going to go through. Maybe we flip him for a fourth round pick. I mean, or third round pick who knows in the future, you know, maybe he turns out to actually be good. The same way Jimmy, they, the Patriots were able to flip Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. So I, I think, I think taking Joe Milton here would be very good. It would, it would give very good uh, Q to like competition to Mitchell Trubisky. Get him. I want to uh, see Casey hit on this guy. For all the reasons you just said, I am 100% on board. I actually wrote about him a couple of months ago, too, for the exact the same reasons that you just said. So you and I are very much on the same page with this one. Um, I love Joe Milton the third. He brings all of the, the, the physical tools. Physically speaking, he is about as close to Josh Allen as you're going to get in this draft, or even Quite in recent literally. memory, to be honest. Um and it gets him on a rookie deal. It gets us a backup quarterback that can learn the system, sticks around for four years, and like you just said, maybe he's the next Matt Schaub, and we ship him off for a first-round pick. You remember when uh, Matt Schaub was a, a preseason darling with the Atlanta Falcons? They shipped him off to Houston, and he became arguably their best quarterback in their history, though it's a short history. But, I, yeah, I love Joe Milton in this spot. Agreed. Take him. Oh, Roy. Roy. I'll fight, I'll, I'll fight yeah. you, Roy. I know. I threw that comment up. I was hoping I'll you guys, bite so. you, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what Madden says. Because Madden has Peterman rated at a 48 overall. So oh, when the rookies boy. come out next year, we'll see what Milton's projected at. <laughs> uh, we, we do use Madden down stats, list. too, We're, out here from time to time. <laughs> hey. We've got three picks to go. We are almost at an hour, so we're going to speed this up a little bit. It's getting easier. Um, De Devonshire, I don't hate at all. I okay. do think we need a corner, to be honest. Nurzad, I like Nurzad. Yeah, again, I would like, it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about as far as the depth we can, currently have. But he can play center, though. But he plays center. I say though. just scroll them. We don't you have see a, a couple center. names that stick out, and we'll. There's Frank Gore. Jr. There's your number three running back right there. No, there not yet. We can grab him at two o four. Okay. I think so. All right. Um. So, and I also think we need a linebacker. We don't have a whole heck of a lot of depth behind Milano and Bernard anymore since uh, – We all know A.J. Klein's going to be back in September. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I'm not which too worried. Why, I'm not, which is why I'm we not, need another linebacker. I'm not too worried about <laughs> linebackers since we'll have A.J. Klein back. <laughs> uh, and and I somebody brought this up. Another uh, Bills fan brought it up when we were talking about linebackers. I think it was on social media, on Twitter probably. Uh, we're not 100% sure what we're going to get with Matt Milano. His injury was pretty bad. So um, 
Roy still says we need a new tar number two running back. He's saying basically Ty Johnson's number three. So, hmm. I don't know. What do you got? Do we? Well, I, I think. I think. I think it's corner. Corner. Okay, I'm um, between corner and linebacker. Mike, what do you think? Uh, I'm saying defensive back was one of my priorities first, and we haven't gone there yet. Okay. So I'm going to have to go uh, cornerback here. All right. So MJ Devonshire it is. And we all know the last time we picked a corner out of pit, he worked out halfway decent. So. All right. Halfway decent. All right. Roy, now, can now we, we, can can we get Frank, Frank Gore. Gore here? Roy, are you okay with that? I'm fine with that. <laughs> Roy says no good running backs <laughs> left now, so don't waste a pick. I'm all about bloodlines, though, and I watch Frank Gore Jr. play. Um, and we didn't pick was, the Crabtree, so. He was pro – I believe he was the MVP of, uh, I think, the Shrine Bowl. Um, I watched him in that game. He had like six carries for like 100-something yards. Like, he killed it. He was – he looked good. Um, so I'm okay with him being our number two, three, whatever you want to call it, guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Roy says F, no. Roy's never going to listen to our show again or watch it because we are not picking any of his guys. <laughs> Frank Gore. <laughs> Mike, Frank Gore, yeah, are you on? You know, we, we, were, we were stuck between corner and linebacker last time, so why wouldn't we just get both? With a name like Steel Chambers, man, he really sounds like – that's like if he played for the Steelers, that, he would definitely be part of the Steel Curtain. At this point, we can still get another linebacker that's going to be just another depth piece at 248. Well, it's just as good of a shot. Yeah. I but, mean, 53 as. But to Mike's as, point, we've seen multiple seventh round guys, even unrestricted free agents, as running backs make an impact. Agreed. Um, so I, maybe you still. I, I'm going to like a name. Uh, okay, we're going linebacker. Mike, you won that. And don't one. forget. All right. We have Balen Specter. Yeah. Yeah. Who can never stay on the field anymore or ever. It was one time. There one you time go. His whole career in Man, we, we oh. had we we had to pick uh your buddy there. <laughs> All right. Tag of Iloa. Are we taking him just to spite the Miami Dolphins? No, we can't. <laughs> can't believe that just popped up. Keep scrolling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got uh, another linebacker, Trevin Wallace, Kentucky. Another running back, Jaden Sheeran. Do we want to make this guy our, our last pick? I don't know, I, I don't know anything right. about him. We, we got to pick a line, an offensive lineman we haven't had yet. I don't think we need to now. Let's get Kenny Logan there, the safety. Double up Why the don't safety? we see what, what other running backs are out there? What other safety are we – oh, we got Bade, right? Braid? Braid, yeah. yeah. Oh, Braid, yeah. Okay, other running backs, we've got Jaden Sheridan, Blake Watson, Isaiah Johnson. I like Carson, Carson Steele. Carson you can't have Steele. two steals. <laughs> you can't. Yes, we can. Josh. I like Carson Williams. Steele. Yeah. I, well, so I'm going to leave it between you two. One of you saying running back. The other one says, um, what did you say, Mike? I don't remember. Oh, you said See? another offensive line. Yeah. Offensive lineman or or double up his safety. So the safety okay. spot. Pick Tulia. Oh, there it is. Stop it, there. Kenny Logan, Kite Oladapo. Oladapo. There you go. See, there's still Oladapo. some decent uh, picks here late, as far as safety. All right, what do you want to do? I'd take any Oladapo. of them. Oladapo. K Casey's going to compromise and, and go safety with me. I'll let him pick the guy. Because I'd take Logan, Oladapo, or Proctor probably. At, okay. You know, this late. So we'll go we'll go Oladapo. Done. Done. And here's the draft. We're getting a grade now. It's going to be a C. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's all right. It's not the hey. worst. That's not the best either. But. Um, yeah, I'm so happy. they. I'm. Yeah. I would be happy if the Bills walked away with this draft. Yeah, totally. me too. Well, I mean, we just did this draft, so of course we'd be happy, right? Yeah, I mean, come on. 
Um, you know, there's all, there's why wouldn't we be happy if they modeled that. their draft after ours? <laughs> All right, I, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to screenshot it. I'm going to throw it up on, on my Twitter, uh, and let's see. And we'll put it on our Facebook page, too. I want to get people's thoughts and see what Bill's Mafia thinks about this. Um, we are, uh, yeah, we're a little bit over time. Almost 1,900 live viewers. That's freaking amazing. Yes. That is awesome. Thank you. Once again, this will be our last show on the Buffalo Rumblings Network. Uh, we are going. We were picked up today. We are moving over to. And Roy Collins is firing us. Um, uh, moving over to the fan sided network. Uh, it's the same group that I write for at Buffalo Lowdown. So we're super excited about what that's going to uh, be like. But like I said, you can check us out on our YouTube page at the Mafia Cast, and as well as on Facebook again at the Mafia Cast. We make it simple for everybody. The team, the name will not change. So that's good. We've we've built up this brand a little bit. Never. So we're happy that we get to keep that. But um yeah anything else you guys got you want to add just thanks again everyone for watching check out john's store game on sports hamburg and greece uh get over there check out all the cool things he has yeah just thanks again guys this has been awesome uh thanks buffalo rovelins for having us um for the past year it's, it's been a fun ride and uh yeah we'll just see what the future brings uh stay tuned everyone follow the pages find the mafia cast anywhere and uh yeah stay up to date on the latest to everyone at Buffalo Rumblings, thank you. Thank you. Family. Yes. Thank you. To be our family. Spence, Spence, you're, you know, the number one for us when it, like, you got us in here. Sarah, thank you. Uh, Joe Miller, S Sterling, you know, at, and Fina, Ostrowski, everybody. <laughs> you're going to forget people. I, There's so I, many. <laughs> I, I know I'm forgetting people, but, like, yeah. we, we've only been here for a year, and, we, we just want to thank everybody for being as welcoming as you were and willing to help us out the ways that you did. We're excited for bigger, better and things and, you know, mafia cash forever. Yeah. Mafia cash forever. Let's do this, man. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, all right. We probably will see you all next week. We'll keep you posted though. Go bills. Go bills. Go bills. Thank you. Hey, it's John from Game On Sports Memorabilia. Check out our huge selection of unopened wax boxes of Pokemon cards. You have to see our selection of over 2 million sports cards in stock, plus hard-to-find card supplies. And if you have anything to sell, bring it in. We can help you determine the true value before you sell it. We pay fair market value every day. It's Game On Sports Memorabilia, 2670 Dewey Avenue in Greece. Check out our podcast for news and information on the card and collectible universe. Also, check out our Facebook page. For more, call 481-2153. That's 481 481-2153.